to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's lift our hands and bless His name. Lord, we wait on you tonight. Shiba katala babara Lift your hands, lift your voice, and begin to bless him. Bless his name. Bless him in the spirit. Lord, we wait. Lord, we wait, we wait for the rain. Bless him, lift your hands and bless him in the spirit. Lord, we bless you. For fire, we wait on you for fire. Lord, we wait on you for fire. for fire. Lord, we wait on you for fire. For fire. Go ahead and sing in the spirit, make melodies. Worship. Go ahead, is our year of the rain.
thank you, Jesus. Oh, we invoke the spirit that has filled our history with revival. The same spirit that moved upon the city of Wales. You used Evan Roberts and you did mighty things in that city. You moved upon a street called Azusa. And a wide-eyed evangelist called William Seymour came under the influence of this mighty presence. And you led the Pentecostal movement. You came upon women like Catherine Coleman, Amphi Sempo McFasson, Maria Woodward Eater, and they shook their generations to a steel. You came upon Alexander Dewey and a frail cobbler called Smith Wigglesworth. You came upon Madame Gunion. The spirit of the age to come. We invoke that spirit in this season of the rain. Set us ablaze. Let the rain pour. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit. Let there be an outpouring of miracles and signs and wonders. It shall come to pass in that day, say the Lord, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Upon the maids, I will also pour out my spirit. I will show forth wonders in the heavens and signs in the earth. Blood, fire, and smoke. This is that, O oh God, that Joel prophesied about. We are in that season of the rain. Let there be an outpouring. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. Open up the fountains of the deep and cause the rain to come upon your people. We are in that season. Ask ye for the rain in the time of the latter rain. We ask. This is the season of signs and wonders. The season of the manifestation of sons. The season of miracles. The season of the emergence of ambassadors. Envoys of his majesty. The salt of the earth. The light of the world. Champions. Apostles and prophets. Men of fire. Oh, let that army arise. Let that army arise, a mighty army, the fire divorced before them, behind them a desolate wilderness, they shall leap upon walls, they shall run like chariots, men who fear no evil, the fire will not burn them, but they will consume everything before them, therefore we blow the trumpet in Zion, and we sound the alarm upon the holy mountain we declare that this is that season this is that time this is that moment in prophecy we are the generation that seeks your faith oh god of jacob arise so mighty man and empower your army for this season Yeah. 
Take it higher. Give me a visitation tonight. It's our year of the rain. My goodness. Give me a visitation. You will catch fire. This is the year you will catch fire. It's a rain that brings fire. It's a rain that makes you an inferno. Pray and say, Lord, I make a demand. I ask for the rain. Distracted tonight. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I am absolutely convinced. Hear me. That every one of us here represents a sphere of influence. Every one of us here represents a jurisdiction of dominion. And so this is a summit. It's, it's a conversion of kings. 
it's a convergence of ambassadors so as you travel you travel for your sphere of influence as you pray you pray for they that are tied to your grace don't see yourself as a single entity for when they looked at the womb of rebecca they saw that they were two nations not just twins two nations we each represent territories dimensions of spiritual operation that the nations will benefit from and so when you cry you cry on behalf of eternity when you travel you travel on behalf of the family on behalf of the community Lord, we love you. We love you. We thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Honestly, let me tell you something. We're not ready for what God has in store for us this year. We think we are, but I don't think we're ready. Because... God is going to move this year in most dramatic proportions. You will see ordinary men turn into things that will make you wonder. And this is not some spiritual things, physically. You will see men that will walk like gods in this city, across this nation. All God is asking is, do you believe? Do you believe? He said, blessed is she that believes. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance of those things that have been spoken. Unto her. Lord, we believe. Let the rain fall without restriction. We empty ourselves and we empty our vessels. Hallelujah. We ask you to help us tonight. Spirit of the living God, we submit to you. Unveil the mysteries of the kingdom. Teach us truths that are older than us. Teach us what made the ancient powerful. Open us up to ancient vistas in the spirit. Show us realities that predate our dispensation. Grant us access to abilities and dimensions in the spirit. Show us the ancient path. Oh, that we will step into the Sabbath. Grant us grace. For there is a longing in our spirit. There is a longing upon our generation. A fresh dimension of the reality of the spirit. And we trust you to bring us into this reality. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. You're welcome. Just sit quietly. Pick up your writing materials. There is a lot to do tonight. Please no, let no seats be vacant. There are so many people. If we can get some of the people to occupy the seats. Some of them are the extreme overflows. If they can come and at least stand inside. There are people under the anointing ushers. I know that you... It's a season of the rain. We will step into realities this year. We will step into strange dimensions of grace. And the Lord will grant it so in the name of Jesus Christ. You will step into levels of realities that will change your physical form. Your physical form that will alter you. When Moses stood in the glory, he did not know that he was being changed. After 40 days, he stepped out and his skin, his flesh, his physical flesh. It's, it's not just about using cream and all of that. There is a level of glory 
I'm telling you, I want you to believe this. God is not playing games with us. If we mean business with him, he says, who has believed our report? Who has believed? You will see mountains melt as if they never existed. That's what happens when the glory of the Lord comes. You will see God turn around situations. He said, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. I want every meeting that we come for all through this year, you must be very intentional about it. You must be very definite about it. Hallelujah. You can greet and play around after the service. But the moment you step into this building, before the meeting starts, I want you to know that you are standing upon Mount Zion. And anything, just anything can happen. Hallelujah. That's what God wants to do. Let it cover all the earth. Oh, that's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. That's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the rain of His Spirit cover us. Let it cover all. I wrote this song years ago from my spirit. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. with your glory even tonight and bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord the reality of spiritual laws the reality of spiritual laws the reality of spiritual laws what we'll be learning tonight will be so powerful so powerful my goal for us this year is that we will become so powerful men and women of extreme spiritual power and it will happen as we are shown the keys of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom listen let me tell you something for years for years there has been a cry in my spirit. Somehow, there is a testimony in my spirit that our generation has lost touch with ancient realities. You hear me use that word again and again. People move forward, but something in my spirit keeps drawing me back. And it says, if you can go back enough, you will find something we lost. Hallelujah. I've been intrigued every time I read things in scripture and it talks about ancient things. There is something that the ancient knew. It's not supposed to be so difficult. We have lost touch with the dimension of reality. Carnality, flesh, intercourse with Babylon cut short a flow of spiritual reality. And the Lord told me something last year. He said, mantles do not leave the earth to heaven. That means every dimension of grace that has ever been displaced in the earth, they are archived in certain dimensions here in the earth realm. And if we can trust the ministry of the Holy Spirit, He will navigate us to those parts. And we will collide with these ancient mantles. And we will do strange things upon the surface of this earth. You believe that? And this is our journey. Show us great things, oh God. The reality of spiritual laws. Aside from revealing the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ, 
one of the cardinal areas of my call is to teach the body of Christ the principles of the kingdom to unveil to the body of Christ that dominion is a resultant effect of the knowledge and the comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom a mystery is a hidden truth that requires the agency of the spirit or another spirit that is not of this realm to open an individual to the reality it's called a mystery mysteries the occultic realm operate on the strength of mysteries coded operations that are shrouded in mysteries science cannot explain it it takes your fraternity with another spirit to open you up to those dimensions and so he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there is the word a man and a man knowing his wife it has been given to you to come into a union with the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah if we ever will attain to that stature of spiritual authority where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom then i want you to know that it will never just be by impartation it will never just be by stories it will stand upon the strength of something that we know what did job know that turned his financial predicament in a moment the bible did not tell us what business he did the bible just said job prayed for his friends mysteriously people started coming from everywhere brothers and sisters are there portals we have lost in the spirit have we not lost touch with certain dimensions of spiritual reality hallelujah The prophet said, bring me a mystery. Who taught him? Who lectured him? How did he know? He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart. My heart is indicting a good matter. He said, yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Who taught this man? Who taught the psalmist that praise was a garment that a man can wear? He called it a garment not an attitude of praise a garment of praise every time they praise god in the place of war i noticed they use a coded language all they said was for he is good and his mercy endures it was not any kind of praise there was a type it was like a spiritual code every time they began to say for he is good and his mercy endures he rose as a man of war meaning not every word invokes every dimension there is a kind of language that makes god to operate in a certain way are you learning something help us oh god look let me tell you brothers and sisters part of my resolutions this year is that i will open us up to deep things some of us will be afraid of some of the things we'll be learning i've been praying and say lord prepare your people because it will rattle the, the foundation of what you know to be Christianity. And you will know that many preachers have lied to us. Hallelujah. So let's prepare our hearts. Because this thing is not the exclusive reserve of one man. It has nothing to do with the boasting of a preacher. Let me tell you something. The hallmark of an apostolic ministry, I will keep saying it till we understand, is not just miracles and signs and wonders and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. There is a dimension of that, right? But the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry is the ability to receive the revelation that is meant for a dispensation, to understand it and communicate it accurately to the people of god because the apostolic ministry is dispensational are you following me now and the knowledge of god is also dispensational meaning there is a curriculum there is a scope of understanding that god expects a dispensation to know are you following me now so that what we call eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations every dispensation coming with a revelation of god and adding that revelation to another dispensation 
Are you following me now? And that means that our dispensation has certain dimensions of God that we must know and we must touch. But it takes the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. Not just to do signs and wonders and to lay hands and heal the sick. That is important. But to be able to sustain a posture in the spirit. Such that we can receive these spiritual realities. Understand them and interpret them to God's people. And then they will be able to walk in this path and you will see certain possibilities in our lives. Hallelujah. And this is what we aim to do in this place. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The reality of spiritual laws. Science has taught us that there are laws that govern this earth realm. They teach us in physics and, and chemistry and other aspects of science that there are laws and scientists have been able to come into the recognition of certain physical laws and they have been able to account for the explanation of certain tragedies that have happened to men hallelujah over time scientists began to inquire as to why men will encounter certain inexplainable tragedies and they later discovered that there were laws that were being violated unconsciously. That you do not recognize that there is a law does not mean it's not there. Are you following me now? Praise the Lord. If a child does not know there is gravity and he jumps on a, a, an altitude like this, the child will fall. Gravity will not say, I excuse you. Is that true? There are many other laws. Now, I want you to know that the same way spiritual laws govern this physical physical laws sorry govern this realm there are spiritual laws that govern the operation of the spirit hallelujah you are able to walk very well when you can master the laws physically none of us will find ourselves walking against gravity for instance and if by any means you are to walk against gravity, you know what to do to be able to remedy the, the imbalance that you are creating. And so you do not find yourself fighting the laws of nature. Gravity, for instance. Friction, for instance. All of these are laws. I want you to know that there are spiritual laws. Say spiritual laws. Many people have been able to find these laws and walk with these principles and they have been able to do mind bogging things in the earth realm and as we explore this reality my goal tonight is not so much to share what the laws are as it is to bring us into a recognition that as scattered as spiritual things look as scattered as the earth is there is a rhythm are you getting my point there is an exact synergy there is a sequence there is an equation of the happening of things they are not as haphazard as we think there is a level of order and accuracy god designed the earth it is our inaccurate understanding or total ignorance to his principles that has resulted to certain levels of setbacks and limitations in our lives and in this year of the rain God wants to open us up to a recognition of certain principles. And you will find out that what has grounded you for years, you will walk cheaply. You will now find out that the, the enemy that many of us has been, have been talking about, they are not necessarily the demons out there. Our ignorance, our lack of understanding the laws of God. Say amen. The key to kingdom dominion please write this down the key to dominion the key to influence the key to power the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom i'll repeat it again Please make sure you are writing something or at least jotting something on your notepad or so on the phone or so. The key to kingdom dominion, the key to influence, 
influence is the capacity to alter people's mindsets the key to power the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom there are ancient laws encapsulated in this bible there are laws that are older than us there are laws that predate our dispensation they have been responsible for the rise and the fall of kings they have been responsible for the rise and fall of champions and when we find peace with these laws we will do big things for the kingdom we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words personalize it say i have come with an open heart I have come with open hearts. Oh, let me ancient world. Daniel chapter 19. Let's begin our journey so that we can pray. We have come with all We have come Oh let me Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22 the story of a cruel king who slept and had a dream forgot the dream and forgot the interpretation and was mounting pressure upon all his wise men and cabinets and daniel said give us time and the bible says he asked for wisdom and in the night can we read together verse 19 one to read then was the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision then daniel blessed the god of heaven verse 20 blessed be the name of the lord forever and ever for wisdom and might are his 21 he, he changed the times and seasons he removed kings and set up kings he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him he said then was the secret revealed <laughs> brothers and sisters secrets can be revealed not everything is known by every christian are you hearing me the Bible says the secret things of the Lord are not just with Christians. They are with them that fear him. And he will reveal his covenants. He will show them his covenants. There are mysteries in our world. There are secrets that have been archived in the bowels of the spirit. And it takes men who can press to say, Lord, open my eyes. Show me the secrets. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. Is that true? Kentucky Fried Chicken, one of the great eateries around. Um, they have a secret recipe that till today has not been revealed. Is that true? That secret recipe is what makes them unique. Coca-Cola, till today... They have not revealed the exact formula and combination.
great men dwell upon the strength of secrets. In ancient time, it was a taboo to reveal the deepest of secrets. They were known only by the king and his envoys, those we call knights or apostles. They were the highest representatives of the king. They knew where treasures were hidden in castles. They knew secret places of escape in chambers. When, when they came to defeat a nation, they knew how to, to invoke the powers of those territories to fight on their behalf. It was an access that was given to them. And so as his ambassadors, God wants to show us. He doesn't want to hide anything from us. He said, come, let us reason together. I want to show you how I operate the heavens so that you can draw from this and do wonders in the earth. If you believe that, say amen. So spiritual laws are real. The spirit realm is a real realm of existence. Just like the physical realm. It is only a lot more superior to this realm. This realm is bounded by many things. There are limitations. For instance, this realm is purely three-dimensional. But in the realm of the spirit, there are many dimensions. A lot of people have preached that there are four dimensions, five. I don't believe that. I believe that there are infinite dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Because the possibilities in the spirit are defined by what dimension you can function. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I want us to know that the spirit realm is real. The spirit realm is real. And there is a constant interaction between the spirit realm and this realm. Every single one of us under the sound of my voice and those following us online, every single one under the sound of my voice interacts with the spirit realm every time. Whether you recognize it or not. The condition to, to interact with the spirit realm is just to be alive. Remember I began the teaching last week showing us the five elements. Right? The elements of creation. We drink water. Is that true? We breathe air. Why don't we breathe dust? We breathe air to live. Air that seems to be immaterial. But we breathe it in our material body to keep us alive. So, our biological composition is, is, a, is a, 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 an intertwining of both this realm and the realm of the spirit. Prosperity is an intertwining of the spirit realm and this realm. Success in life is an intertwining of the realm of the spirit and this realm. The anointing, the ability and the agency of the spirit... When a man stands and you look at somebody with cancer and stretch your physical hand, you may not even make contact with the person and the person starts shaking or the person falls. It tells you that there is something more than what your eyes see. There is an interaction. Is that true? Watch this. I'm speaking to you. There is no, di there is no digital connection between my mouth and your heart. But what I am saying is passing through your ears and it has the ability to influence your paradigm because they are spirit and life hallelujah so we must we must rise to this reality that all we see in our world brothers and sisters is not all there is praise the lord all we see is not all there is there is more say there is more in this building right now inside and outside there are more angels than this crowd gathered here and many of them are doing many things as i teach right now some are imparting graces and all of these things right walking in partnership with the spirit and they are not only angels there are also the spirits of just men made perfect testifying like the witnesses that stood with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. Elijah and Moses. Representing the law and the prophet. They are not the only witnesses. There are many others. Enoch, for instance. Right? 
many other people. So the Bible says, ye are come unto Mount Zion. And it begins to tell us all the things that happen in that place. Listen, the earlier you realize that life is entirely spiritual, that the physical manifestation is only a little portion. Hallelujah. Occultists understand this. Politicians understand this. Is that true? I was, I was studying the world religion. I'll give you a few statistics as we progress. Very shocking. I didn't know there was that much religion in the whole world. I thought there were just maybe 100 or 1,000. I will tell you the figure shortly. <laughs> and all these religions have followers. Ardent, committed, die-hard followers. Meaning the spirit of man is searching for something. Searching for a connection with its source. Somehow, mankind knows that until you interact with this, the spirit realm, there is no stability to your person. There is a longing. So we pray to a deity we call different names for many religions. And we hope that somebody out there of a higher consciousness is listening to us. There are spiritual laws. The same way I can violate gravity and violate other laws and reap the consequences of my disobedience or ignorance. That is the same way I can stumble into a spiritual law I do not know and activate its operation unconsciously and suddenly begin to see certain things manifest physically. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then on the other hand, I can deactivate the operation of a spiritual law without knowing and begin to receive a ripple effect in the physical. Are you following me now? So it seems to me like the journey of many Christians is, is, is a blind dashing into spiritual laws. We are not exactly sure. Sometimes we touch something that activates prosperity. And ha has that happened to you? For weeks you find out that favor is coming. Everything is happening. And then it's like something happens. And it's short. There are times that you find out that everything you say in prayer comes to pass. And then other times you pray and it's as if you are talking to yourself. Hallelujah. There are times you suddenly step into a dimension and seasons and you are having dreams every night. And everything you see is coming to pass. And then certain times. What is responsible for this opening and closing of the gates of the spirit? This is what I want to teach you. The reality of spiritual lives. Even for preachers, there are times you stand to preach and you sense an unusual open heavens. You are just ministering and my goodness, scriptures that you, you read years ago that you cannot even quote normally suddenly come to your mind and you are quoting them verbatim. And other times it looks like you stand and you are wondering, I hope I'm not messing up. Listen, if you get what I'm teaching you, you will keep certain portals of the spirit open perpetually. Hallelujah. Certain people have touched this realm in different forms. Hallelujah. Now watch this. The fundamental principle I want us to understand as we explore this very sensitive teaching. Because what I'm going to be saying will rattle many of us. Hallelujah. Some of the things that I'm going to be saying will challenge us. But I want you to follow me. The fundamental principle I want you to have at the back of your mind is that everything created belongs to God. You will see the advantage of this statement as we progress. Everything created belongs to God. Secondly, all power belongs to God. Hallelujah. All power. Psalm 62 verse 11, please, quickly. Psalm 62 verse 11. It says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power everybody shout all power all power you went to school what is your understanding of all power meaning if there is 
any performance that ever occurs any manifestation of the supernatural in the earth to any degree was either a release or a corruption of power that came from God. Please follow me. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Look up please. When a magician takes a white handkerchief. Please follow me tonight. And waves it. And brings out a dove out of it. What happened? What happened? Hallelujah. When a magician slices himself into half and holds the remaining half of him and is walking and bastardizes your knowledge of physics and biology, what exactly is happening? Listen to me. He said, once have I spoken. Twice. In other words, I emphasize it as a witness that all power belongs to God. That means the central force in the realm of the spirit is not astrology. It's not the constellation. The seat of power in the spirit is God himself. Just follow me. Every religion is the hybrid of a man's pursuit to uncover and look for this mystery entity that we call God. And over time, what has happened is, listen, fallen angels. You know, I spoke to you about the pre-Adamite dispensation. We spoke a bit about that, right? Realities that predate Genesis 1. You find that in Job 38, right? The creation, we spoke a bit now, last year, this year, the creation of angels and all of these things, right? Now watch this. Let me show you a few mysteries in the Bible. Have you read in your Bible that stars fought for a woman? called Deborah. Question, was she an unbeliever? <laughs> Have you had that thing that stars fought for Deborah? Have you had people mention statements like, you were born with 10 stars? Eh? Whether you believe it or not, just follow me. I'm not teaching you Scientology. I'm provoking you to be mature. Just listen to me. Are you following me now? Many of us come from different cultural backgrounds. Where at one point or the other they have brought somebody to your house. Hello, Baba, Mama, whatever. They shall brought somebody to your house. And he was able to do certain things. Whether he used coal or not, whether he used whatever. And he began to unveil certain things. Either reveal the person that stole. Is that true? Stole money or meat or lied. Is that true? And then he began to reveal some things. How many of you have seen people who are not born again? They have never given their life to Christ. Yet they have functioned in what you know to be word of knowledge. Is that true? In certain tribes, they call them those whose head has opened. Is that true? People who can see beyond certain things. Listen. God has spoken once. Let it be known to you. That when it comes to the realm of the spirit, there are not many forces. There is one force. Everything revolves around him. His name is God Almighty. Whether we accept to call him God Almighty or not. Are you getting my point now? Hmm. So how come Satan can manipulate power? How come traditional rulers can manipulate power? Please follow me. How come a man can look at this lady and say, look, um, you will not give birth. Case closed. He didn't ask her whether she had faith or not. He just spoke on the strength of something he has been taught. Is that true? How come people read magical books? Huh? All kinds of books. They tell them, recite this. And the moment they recite it, things start happening. Brothers and sisters, am I telling a lie or? Pastors have been afraid of confronting this issue. Because if we don't, many of us will not know when we have entered witchcraft. If all power belongs to God, then whose power are witches using? Follow me. If all power belongs to God, 
then the religions that can turn there, there there's the video of a young guy that walked upon water physically he walked upon it huh he walked upon a building sideways and came down no pastor has done that at least i only know one bold pastor who decided is he was prophet daniel the one that lions tore him into pieces in the badan. that's the closest thing that i know but the bible says once have i spoken twice that all so is it that god gave it to these demons no think about it go to zaria city and meet somebody and say i want a husband what's that thing that they carry love portion wealth portion all kinds of of things they give you and one young man is just moving and they blow something towards him he becomes absolutely confused right and starts pursuing a lady helplessly until she does whatever she wants to do with it now think about that if the bible is telling the truth that all power belongs to god i have a question by the way to interest you to know that there are 4200 religions as of today in the world how many 4200 registered all the 4200 religions where did they get their power from satan does not create anything is that clear do we all agree question was god sleeping did they steal some of the power without his seeing what is the mystery behind the seeming strengthening of wicked forces some of you have dreams and you see all kinds of spirits appear to you you are trying to call jesus they shut your mouth with all your knowing of jesus jesus and they stand and they laugh question who empowered them if satan was created <laughs> are you prepared for this year of the rain we are going to talk we are, we are going as deep as god will help us go because we must answer some questions let me tell you when you answer these questions you will, you, you will start laughing at what used to make you cry because when you see it you know that uh -uh, this is the one plus one this is what made it happen and i told you that every time you catch a light what happens in the spirit grace is given to you to walk in that reality so you can see five people struggling over a demon go out go out and you will only pass no prayer light the spirits know what they are seeing you see that because the strength of evil is darkness the bible calls them rulers of darkness not rulers of light whenever there is darkness they are authorized to rule all religions of the world claim to connect people to wealth to joy to happiness to life to peace and to god or some kind of higher cosmic power for assistance that's the whole bit behind every world religion is that not true if somebody comes to take you now and says mary ann i want you to be part of the confucius religion you think you will just come won't i promise you something i'll promise you wealth and happiness i'll promise you that whatever you want speak certain things and it will happen right if marianne speaks it and it happens she will invite Shei and say, Shei, it's easier than that other thing you are doing. Shei will first say, I don't believe it. When life presses her to the wall, she will adopt it. The strength of this religion is that the suffering of mankind is endless. And so eventually, people will search for solution anyhow. Are you getting me? By the way, many of these religions have their branches in Africa. You would think that our suffering or our our backwardness in technology will make us say what is all this find out how many africans do they are not christians they are not muslims they are not hindus right they are something else and they have followers there is an acclaimed personality in this nation i i, I told you that i've repented from mentioning names acclaimed personality who i think for 48 years or thereabout i don't know if it was him or or his brother or somebody who never came out 
never came out for about 48 years. Look, even if you are sitting down for 48 years, power somehow the devil must come upon you. He must land upon your life and interact with you. Sacrifices that men have made. Now the question is, brothers and sisters, if God is good and God is great and he does not eschew evil, what would be the explanation to the seeming empowerment preachers have thought that the power you have the power satan has is your power or he collected it how did he collect it collect it back the question how did he collect it you know we generalize things that we owe people demon is working with something that is solid and provable hallelujah you prayed about something the answer did not come your brother said, come, let's go and visit somebody. They visited the person in two days. The answer came. Is that true? It's true you gave thanksgiving in church, but we really know where that answer came from. Is that true? A woman cries to God, comes to we preachers, and we prophesy in the name of Jesus. I command that cancer to go. Nothing went. Is that true? They just respect us and they won't publish anything on the newspaper. And they quietly go and meet another person. And they invoke things and they have the baby and women of God come and claim the glory. It's better let's sit down and ask ourselves the truth. And answer these questions. Or keep telling lies. There are many people telling lies in church. Many of the miracles people claim to get in church. I am telling you. They got it outside the church. They consulted a lot of powers. There are families today who will never give their children in marriage until they go and ask certain people. And they confirm is that true whether whether you're a pastor whatever you believe keep your westernization they will go and consult even if it means them buying goat ram sheep human being they will consult is that true what then is this mystery there are five religions major religions out of the 4200 the first is hinduism the second is buddhism the third is islam the fourth is christianity and the fifth is new age there's no time and it's not within the scope of the teaching to tell you what this individual sect if i will call them believe there are others who believe like the hindus for instance hindus believe there is one great god but he expresses himself in many ways meaning there are many ways to approach him right so they can have many kinds of deities or envoys that help you communicate to this god and they believe in several doctrines of reincarnation buddhism many people think buddhism worship buddha no they just feel that buddha is the person who has been able to attain that highest level of consciousness as they call it and so they model after his life same with all the other religions new age is the recent teachings that was perpetrated by the kingdom of darkness under new age you are god it's a it's a little stealing away from the bible all these religions there's no time i would have proven to you that they all have their origin from the bible that's why they can prove to any christians that's why christians are the most vulnerable is that true they take bible and show you what supports their belief you say wow this thing is in the bible meaning god must support it there comes that theory that all roads still lead to the same god have you heard those those devilish teachings and so people tell you don't worry when you go to the harbor you say look don't be scared with all this color not i'm doing it's still the same thing it's just different ways of invoking the same god and then he invokes the color not and he says psalms 1 verse 3 i say ah psalms Saba. i know psalms go ahead right to now justify that because psalms 1 was mentioned god is in it is that true what deceit what deceit all power belongs to god now watch this i want you to know this the fallen angels hallelujah 
those we call the fallen angels have taught us but i'll repeat it again just for the sake of establishing a few things the fallen angels when they came to the earth please listen to me they interacted with men and part of that interaction was responsible for supplying certain deep informations don't forget that they were all in heaven right certain laws are god's own laws and they are made to happen how many of you go to the farm and pray and fast for crops to grow please tell the truth after you sow you go back and say oh god no once you sow it to the earth you go back a man can kill another man and steal his land and sow and still reap a bumper harvest because of the existence of physical laws so it is god has put spiritual laws are you getting my point now for spiritual laws to work please come i'm establishing something come sir for spiritual laws to work in the spirit a spirit must assist you in activating its operation are you getting the rules for any spiritual law at all to work there must be a spirit entity that will assist you it is in partnership with a spirit before any spiritual law can be activated so if i am a magician and i'm doing a lot of abracadabra for instance there must have been a spirit that was invoked appeased or a demand is placed upon him is that true now let's explain our traditional festivals what happened what is the whole goal of many traditional festivals they first appease certain spirits either with people who must die or sacrifices and when those spirits are appeased the mediums that interface between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm let the people know that ah this goat the spirit has, has eaten it although you are seeing a physical goat the priest ends up eating the flesh physically uh, uh, the honorarium the, the, everything goes to the priest but i'm saying that the whole goal is that the sacrifice has been received is that true that's what happens no man by his strength can activate spiritual laws are you getting my point there must be the assistance of a spirit watch this i want to shock you now the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws just follow me the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws the spirits of dead men can activate spiritual laws ancestral spirits can activate spiritual laws demons and spiritual wickedness that operate in the heavenlies on the strength of the fact that they are spiritual entities they can guide men to activate spiritual laws watch this so there is a universal law in the spirit for anything to be of god and to carry to carry god's signature there is only one spirit that validates are you getting my point the holy spirit is the only spirit authorized the most holy spirit of god the only one authorized to activate any spiritual law such that god becomes involved and the glory goes to god are you getting my point that means watch this it is possible that i can use magic power and look at sam and do a miracle a real miracle it happens but it did not happen by the spirit of god but because it is a manipulation of a spiritual law it will happen accurately are you getting what i'm saying that means i can give a woman a child but not by the spirit of god is that true i can use the advantage of my partnership with another spirit and remove cancer from her stomach and put back another spirit that means i can receive word of knowledge from a spirit accurate word of knowledge but not from god are you are you getting what i'm saying when you understand this listen to me you will hold the holy spirit 
as a matter of life and death. Are you getting my point? Now, the problem with many men of God is when they started their journey, they started with the Holy Spirit. But they allowed their passion to make them leave the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Ghost said, wait, I'm schooling you in this area. They said, I'm in a hurry. I must enter prophecy. I must enter this Holy Ghost. You can go. And another Holy Spirit, another spirit, really not holy. Another spirit continued the journey. Are you getting the point? And because they seem to have been progressing in spiritual things, that spirit of deception made them feel that is the continuation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So although in them, they feel something is wrong. There is, there is a mixing. Many men of God in this country around that we call fake are not fake. Even those who do magic. Most of what has happened is a perversion. Are you getting me? They went under certain people, certain hands were laid in them, and certain demonic forces were invoked to begin to work with them. And it activated certain possibilities, and they started gaining knowledge on certain laws. Is God helping us? Or are you afraid of the teaching? You will be changed, His glory will be revealed. When the Spirit takes over your soul, you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. I know you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. For you are being changed. His glory is been revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Listen, when you hear us talk a lot about the Holy Spirit and emphasize Him, it is because there are other spirits already. And if you do not embrace the Spirit of God, you will meet with another one eventually. The day you need a job, you will meet with one. Hear me, look up. You never go to a herbalist and return the same way you came. Did you hear what I said? You never, impossible, every man communicates to you out of the strength of the spirit that assists him if you come to me for help and i'm a magician and you are watching me do the magic you finish and say nice man you think you just left but you did not leave alone automatically that's why you will return again someone makes you return the people inside and outside both those who wanted to come or did not come the spirit of the living God drew you. Is that true? When you understand this, brothers and sisters, you will not be impressed just by everything that happens physically. You will seek to know what is the motivation and the spirit behind the operation. Many of us are, are very, once you see supernatural things, you are happy. It doesn't matter whether it came from the pit of hell or wherever. You are just happy. Right? And right now we live in a generation where many people want to enter prophecy. Young people want to enter prophecy. And, and, and they want to enter world of knowledge. They want to enter dimensions. Now nothing is wrong with that. It's because of the revival that is coming. But Satan is already preparing a major deception. Because he has seen it. That's one of the reasons why I'm teaching this. There is a major arsenal of deception. That the devil wants to release to the Nigerian church. Where there will be an outburst of a seeming outpouring. But it's not the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And you will see men move in charismatic dimensions. You will see people do things like angels. Right? Almost no limits to their impossibilities. And even they themselves would not know that they are being deceived. Are you seeing why the book of Revelations and the rest prays that even the elect can be deceived? I have prayed for many people in meetings. 
anointed people ministers of the gospel and as i minister to them i may never get to tell them but they may think what they are receiving in that meeting was impartation what they were receiving was first deliverance from a strange spirit acts chapter 16 don't turn there remember a lady who had the spirit of divination is that true did she give people word of knowledge please answer me and the bible says when some businessmen found her they said you are exactly what you are looking for and they started using her you pay money to prophesy you think if the people were not getting results they will come back they were getting results she will say this will happen and it will happen and when paul i like paul so two spirits paul had a word of knowledge her too she had her own word of knowledge two spirits right and paul looks at her and she begins to say these are great men of god you know what she was looking for she was looking for partnership because human beings cannot discern the difference so that she knew that paul was only visiting the city so let's be friends so that when you leave the city they will say ah, ah if paul is not here i am here pastors hear me you must be careful in this day and age the kinds of meeting and ministerial associations you join yourself with there are many of us they invite you everywhere to preach with everybody and your answer is yes sir you think you are saving sinners you will enter the midst of devils without knowing and they will corrupt the authenticity of the grace of god upon your life are you getting what i'm saying it will be a three-day meeting you will be the one to start first you will start and there will be mighty signs and wonders when you finish devils will come and hug you and you will snap together and then the next day people will come and they'll say just like the servant of god ministered yesterday we are continuing and people will catch strange spirit there are meetings people have gone to the moment they left the meeting lost came upon their lives and they started looking for ladies uncontrollably they fell under the anointing they rolled around and prayed in tongues and the brother got up with miracle power and love for girls confusion how can i be moving so much in the anointing right or somebody gets up and just begins to steal the reality of spiritual laws we constantly interact with this law watch this spiritual laws are very powerful because they are not only creative they can change realities in this physical realm Are you following my teaching now? That is the reason why a magician can hold a handkerchief and say, Sam, hold it. They say, roll it. And Sam will roll it. And Sam will bring out a fowl. How does handkerchief change to a fowl? Right? What they simply did was to take advantage of the laws of creation and manipulate it. Are you getting my point? And what is the goal? The goal is to convince you to come into partnership with the spirit that is assisting them. The spirit that is assisting them is not assisting them for nothing. I hope you know that. When Jesus was on the earth, he was not the only one doing miracles. I hope you know. Remember there was a certain time the disciples were angry and they were complaining. That there are some people that are doing miracles somewhere. Oh, Jesus, you are the happening man. Where did this? And we are your other people. So if it's not you, it should be us. Where are these strangers coming from again? And Jesus made a very controversial statement. He said, Whoever is not what? Against us is for us. Ah. Spiritual laws. So Deborah could look at the stars and say stars i understand what you represent to the inhabitants of the earth align yourself in a way that the powers that the men use for war will not work and the bible says the stars fought for deborah with the permission of god joshua my namesake in the bible what happened to him he looked at the sun and said if this sun goes down they are going to kill our people because of that sun stand still right daniel went to bed and the secret was revealed 
And he said, Oh king, I know what you saw. You saw a being, an image stand with the head of gold, the breastplate of silver, and you saw clay mixed with metal at his feet. And he began to describe the fall of different empires, the Christian empire, the Babylonian empire, and down to the new age that attempts to communicate towards virtual reality. That's the last empire, the feet that is a mixture of clay and iron. One side the government is soft, on another side the government is hard. It's a mystery. He saw it described. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. The, the proof that God is in a thing is not just in the result, but the spirit that initiates and sustains that process. This is where I'm driving at. The proof that a thing is of God. The Holy Ghost must be both the initiator and the sustainer of that spiritual process. Otherwise, it is fetish, it is demonic, it is from darkness. Even if it produces a real result, I'm giving you the reason now. It's producing a real result because it was the manipulation of a physical law. Or a spiritual law and because of the advantage of the superiority of the realm of the spirit over the physical realm it will produce results watch this every spirit that initiates a process leaves a signature of itself upon that process are you hearing what i'm saying when julius Baga builds what do they leave they build their their logo is that true if pw builds they leave everything meaning if satan gives a child he will leave his signature right if satan heals the sick he will leave his signature when you know this you will know the reason why many people do not experience complete deliverance or complete healing or many there are many reasons but the major reason is because satan comes to steal kill and to destroy so although he uses spiritual law there must be darkness in his operation so satan will give you a miracle that will create another problem right one miracle that creates another problem and you come to him he gives your family money and then gives another person the spirit of drunkenness when you come as drunkenness is being solved barrenness follows right there is a signature one law being activated and causes another one that's why it is the blessing of the lord that can make rich and the, there will be no sorrow there is always a signature of darkness that signs upon whatever comes from satan please hear me tonight not every open door is anointed the fact if you force a door in the spirit it will open Jesus Christ there are secular musicians that sing and for those of us who used to listen to their songs or those who listen around as we pass by when you hear their voices you know that this voice is it has a glory that is not physical are you getting me spiritual laws manipulated but they must pledge allegiance to the spirit that assisted them that's why you listen to the music and physically you receive the glory that looks like from heaven but it does something to your spirit man because those laws help satan to continue his agenda in the earth is god speaking to us tonight so number one realize that there are spiritual laws number two realize that no man can activate the operation of spiritual laws until assisted by a spirit entity number three there are many spirits that can activate spiritual laws spirits of the dead all kinds of fallen spirits but god has only one spirit that is permitted authorized to search his heart and activate these laws according to his counsel for man and the name of that spirit is the spirit of the living God. Is the Holy Ghost, spirit of the living God. 
He's the whole He is. Number one, we have not allowed the Spirit of God to teach us these operations of the Spirit so that we can align ourselves with these laws of the Spirit. I may just touch on one of the laws, maybe two of the laws, really. We'll just touch on two of those spiritual laws and then we'll just end because I want us to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Laws of the Spirit. Watch this. This guy is playing this. Did you know that he's activating a law, a spiritual law? What he's playing is a language. Your senses don't understand, but your spirit understands it. That's why you want to sit down and keep listening to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The melodies. You know why many people are addicted to secular music? Honestly, it's not just that they are bad people. It's that those melodies are languages. They draw your spirit. But because those who sing them have fraternized with certain spirits, they draw you and they induce the operation of certain strange spirits. So you hear him playing what he's playing. He's playing the strings. And he's, he's doing something to your spirit man. If a heavily sits down and plays, you will keep enjoying and you will fall down. But not under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You will fall down and stand up and something will land on you. Are you getting that now? So it matters what spirit you sit under. It matters what spirit produces the result that you celebrate. It matters not just that results are being produced. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If we do not rise to understand the laws of the spirit, we who are the sons of light, I want you to know that many people will run to the devil. And he will give them the result they want by operating spiritual laws and take their souls in exchange. If we do not rise to contend for the power and the grace that will cause fruitfulness in the life of women, they will go to Babalawos every day. We can be grumbling and be calling everybody fake and calling everybody. <laughs> we have to be careful because some of us are the ones who are fake. Not just because we are going to have a list. But we have refused to hold on to that which is real. See that? Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit must be the initiator and the sustainer of every spiritual knowledge we receive. This becomes our only guarantee to escape perversion. The Holy Spirit is the only guarantee that will escape perversion please let me surprise you and understand me you can take just this bible verbatim without the presence of the holy spirit you can still hold get into error are you getting me you can still hold the bible blindly and you will still get into error there are many people who go to herbalists i counsel a lot of people and some people come and meet me and they or their children or wives have gone to herbalists and they say they go to a herbalist and they see many books and they see holy bible holy bible was produced by a publishing company some of the people who produce this thing are not even born again is that true they are just doing business zondervan or whatever publishing company but it is the presence of the spirit of the living God. Meaning a demon spirit can still come upon this and give it another interpretation. That's why every sect of the Christian faith uses this. But they got another interpretation by the interaction of strange spirits. Genesis 11. That's what happened to Nimrod Kush, the origin of witchcraft. Nimrod Kush, these fallen angels appeared to him. In fact, before Genesis 11, the days of Noah... The Bible says strange aliens started coming upon the earth. Is that true? And they started sleeping with the daughters of men. Brothers and sisters, our ladies are smart people. Do you think an angel will just come with wings and horn and say, um, Marianne, I'm in love with you. Wouldn't you run? If you see a beast with tail, with horn, says, I'm, before he says, I'm in love, you will run away. These beings were not daft. They came and walked like men. I told you angels don't have wings. And there is no record of angels with wings in the Bible. Those who have wings are cherubims. In fact, angels appeared with people, they ate with people in the Bible. Is it not true? 
Angels ate with people in the Bible. When the angel appeared to Mary, she didn't say, I'm afraid. She wondered what the salutation, not the angel. Meaning they had been seeing them. When the angel appeared to Zechariah and all of these kinds of people, it is the seraphs that cover. Cartoon films have, have created these things based on their interpretation and now we are not criticizing them but they have not helped us to understand the reality of spiritual things <laughs> hallelujah are we following now ah i sense the presence of god there are so many spiritual laws i want you to know that if i ask you what are the physical laws you would name them Sir Isaac Newton, in his study of mechanics, came up with several laws, right? There are, the, the, are fundamental laws, first, second, third law. There are all kinds of laws. Laws of thermodynamics, conservation of matter, physics and chemistry has all kinds of law. Newton's law of universal gravitation. There are all kinds of law. Chemistry, Le Chatelier's principle of equilibrium. All kinds, the Schrodinger equation. All of these things are men and women coming together in an attempt to explain laws. There are laws that guide our understanding into quantum physics. Right? When we do chemistry, qualitative analysis and all of that we try to use the colors or or the things that emanate from solutions to be able to help us know what um, ion or whatever it is that is there all of these are physical laws in the same way there are spiritual laws spiritual laws spiritual laws bless you sam sorry hallelujah let's touch on two of these laws can we I read an article there is a powerful series on finance when we are teaching that one we'll share it but let me give you the preview the anchor scripture to that that series is thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over there was a relationship between the anointing on his head and the running over of the cup thou anointed my head with oil and my cup running over hallelujah now a wealthy man was once asked what the secret of his wealth was and i got to find out that all he said was he found an ancient manual right a manual that dates 2300 years ago written by a greek philosopher that manual they seem they said seem to contain some magic powers that even if you read just the title alone fortunes will begin to come to you i know some of you with all this message i say where is that manual i can ask god for forgiveness where is that manual <laughs> repent this is the year of the rain many of you have so, have so far it doesn't matter what where is that? Some of you will go and browse it after this, this meeting. Is there an online version? Let me go come and read it and come for miracle service. Hallelujah. That means, you know what this Illuminati and secret societies and all these occultic organizations do? They are men and women who interacted with these spirit beings. And they reveal to them a lot of these spiritual laws. They reveal to them that this universe is not just sand. They reveal to them that air is not just air. Water is not just water. And they have excellently archived this principle through centuries. Right? Let me tell you. These were the very principles that kings used. Did you hear that in ancient times king had, kings had scrolls? And certain things were written. In fact, part of the writings were magic formulas that will open certain doors. You see them in some of the films that you watch. All these things were an aberration of spiritual laws. What does that tell you? That means truly all things are available for life and godliness. If we can allow the Holy Spirit to take the word of God and guide us, all things are really possible. Hallelujah. One of the most prominent business law 
among many business people is what they call the law of attraction. I, I, I don't believe it in that sense. And that law teaches that it is, it's, a, it's an extension of, of Newton's law of universal gravitation. That the earth is a living thing. Right? And it begins to say all kinds of things and it credits the power to modern nature. It makes it look like modern nature is supervising our, our, our activities. That's, that's demonic from the pit of hell. The devil will never give credit to God. And they have used it and made children brilliant in school. They have used those laws. How many of you have, 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 have seen all these things they spoke about? Uh, they speak about hypnotism and all of this so i know i'm stretching you tonight some of you are wondering who am i now am i a christian no, <laughs> listen i'm training you because one day many of you who want to go abroad you will go abroad and you will look for living faith and dunamis and redeem you will not find anywhere the only one you will find is a temple a temple you must greet the priest to resume your work and once you go there, they will look at you and when you will not bow, they will ask you questions. And you say, in Koinonia, I was taught ABC and they laugh. They say, really? You know, lack of exposure is what is making some of us comfortable with this, our Christianity. Because we think the whole world is like Zaria. When you go out of this place and see the way people hate God, you will know you need more to stand. Is that true? That's why God refused you from going abroad. Because he would have, he would have, he would have converted. Two days he would have, he would have left God. By the time they bamboos your mind, and then they tell you, okay, just read this portion, and you read this portion, and you go out, and people start calling you from Nigeria and sending you money. So what is going on? Ah, say let me read the other parts that I didn't read again. You think you won't do it? hallelujah and the holy spirit has guided me through these spiritual laws a lot of them have been preached in the body of christ but even those who have preached them have not preached them with the level of revelation and gravity they just preach them because one person had another man of god preach it hallelujah number one my goodness pray in tongues for one minute say Lord open my eyes something is about to change in your life now I've had several encounters through the word of God I'm about to share with you I've read it in books over the years but when God began to open me up to it it changed my life forever Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 Let's see how far God will help us. We have to stop somewhere to pray. What you are about to learn must change you. I'm telling you, you will be so changed, you will be surprised. Many of you will carry the presence of God. You will carry the glory of God. You will see breakthroughs happen in your life in ways that will surprise you. Everybody read, please. One, two, read. Just the first portion, the first clause, one to read. Listen, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will become, so he already is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he so he. I learned and I have seen it. I taught the heads of department during our retreat a bit of it and the Lord has permitted me to share this now. That your life, listen to me, your environment and the quality of your life is a reflection of both your mindset and the sum total of your belief system. Listen to me. Your life, the quality of your life today the quality of your life, the quality of your environment, the quality of the works of your hands and the things that you do is a direct reflection of your ideologies. 
a direct re reflection of your perceptions about God, about life, about wealth, about whatever it is. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart. That means your life will eventually open up and reveal to the physical what is in your heart. A powerful spiritual law that your life and your environment will eventually become a reflection of your reality. My goodness. My goodness. That means heaven is a revelation of God's mindset. Heaven is a reflection of the excellency of his thought. Earth is a reflection of the mindset of mankind. Selfishness. Watch this. I don't know if it was last week or so that, that I said it. I think I shared it during the retreat. Take a security man. Is that true? Take him to the office assuming you have a, a corporation with three story buildings. The last story building belongs to the CEO. Take the security man to that story building. Leave him there for two weeks. That office will start reflecting his mindset. Right? Immediately. Because when the man sits on that chair, his mindset will refuse that reality. First, he will feel he does not qualify for it. And then second, he will be afraid because he will think that after a while, they will come and take it. So he will say, let me steal and loot. The first thing is he will remove, whether, <laughs> what did I say that day? Stabilizer. He will steal the stabilizer and run away and sell it. And say, how can you put a, a big stabilizer, 10,000? I mean, the, the light is regulated from Nepal on or, or what, what they call them? Power holding company. Praise God. So he will steal it. The next time he will see a beautiful artwork and he will say, how much will they sell this one, please? He say, 20,000. I say, go and sell it. There are two. Sell one and leave one. Right? You give him a glass cup. He says, no. Package them together. Let's sell it. Buy me a rubber cup, please. I'm, I'm contented. His mindset is already playing out. He will step into the place dirty and won't clean it. Right? He will eat food and leave it there. He will lead that document. He will take any piece of paper and clean water with it, not knowing what the document is. At the end of two weeks, that office has reflected his ideology. That's why those who get who wants to be a millionaire, none of them ends up being a true millionaire after five years because what they, are, what they have gotten does not subscribe to the truth, the principles that brought it. You never become wealthy by receiving dash money i'm telling you this there are people who receive hundred thousand every month maybe from parents or well wishers but the revelation they have about prosperity about god about money drives wealth away from them is that true are you getting me there are men of god whose churches you will never see miracles happen because there is a mindset about miracles they have that will never allow the Holy Spirit to bless people. Is that true? They don't want to see anybody fall under the anointing. They don't disturb us with noise. We want order in this church. And because of that, although they are God-fearing, the Holy Spirit wants to do great things, but their ideology. So listen to me. The only way to change your life is to change your mindset and your perception. Listen to me. I was teaching the leaders and I taught them this. I told them, do you know why some ministries have the best of everything? Have you wondered why? You see certain ministries, the best keyboardists, the best um, computer um, people, the best sound people. Let me tell you why. Because the, the, the mindset of that man, right? will bring to that ministry people who are consistent with his ideology. There goes the same birds of the same feathers. Do what? So the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 4 now, right? 4 verse 23 it says, guard your heart. You see that? With all diligence. This is the Bible. It says, keep thy heart 
with all diligence for out of it are what the issues the quality of your life is locked up within your mindset i believe god for anything i believe god can take this ministry to any height hallelujah i do not ever believe that there can be limitations in the work of god that's my mindset right that's why you see members of living faith for instance they are men of faith because they are a reflection of the conviction of the founder being a man of rugged faith it's in living faith you hear that a man died and they carried him and rubbed oil from his head to his toe till he came back and they come to testify do you have the gods to do that kind of thing it's in living faith you hear that a man died and for three days his wife was with the man on the bed and said you are still my husband you are alive and after three days he comes back to life he did not need to necessarily change them he first changed himself listen if you are not changed your words will not carry power your words only reflect the authority based on the change that has occurred in you that's why see let me tell you if Creflo Dollar or any of these people who are really well, they come right now and teach you on prosperity, some of you will be crying and you hate poverty forever. Not necessarily because what they are sharing is deep. They are communicating their reality. If Sam comes and holds the mic and begins to worship, what he is reflecting to you is an overflow of his reality. The deposit of the anointing within him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you can listen to another musician and nod your head. And Frank Edwards, for instance, can sit on his keyboard and play the same song and you are crying. Brothers and sisters, leaders influence people by becoming the change they want the people to be. Right? That means when I become convicted by my ideologies, it will influence your perception and it will be easy to change you. That's why the more successful a man becomes, the easier it becomes to influence others. Because his life now has sufficient testimonies. Are we getting blessed? Many of us want to see changes in our lives in 2015. Hear me. Change will never come if you are still blaming people. You and God in partnership with his word are the only requirements for that change to come if you do not allow the word of god to renew your mindset i promise you you will never get anything in your life that has not first become a reality and a deposit in your spirit is somebody hearing what i'm saying that's where it is out of this that all kinds of religions bring a lot of metaphysics and what they call um, astral meditation, right? So they tell you, put a picture of the, the jeep and you look at it and say, ah! They say, now see yourself in the jeep. They say, I'm driving. You see, that is madness. But I'm only trying to tell you that they stole those laws. They are an aberration, a corruption of spiritual laws that's why whenever god wants to bless a man god convinces you and makes sure you agree with him if you don't agree with him it will never happen in your life for a long time god kept telling abraham i want to change you abraham could not get it because of his idol worship mentality and god said come out i don't know what to do to come out he said start counting the stars abraham was counting and he was seen he will count and miss god said do it just continue and his mind was acclimatizing and abraham said wow and the bible says finally abraham believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness when the angel appeared to gideon gideon said oh, oh, don't deceive me the angel took time he didn't quarrel gideon because he knew that if gideon did not agree with him nothing will happen and gideon said i need proof let the cloth be wet let the ground be dry he said no problem if that's what it takes to adjust your mindset to authorize us go ahead and gideon said now don't be offended let the cloth be dry i i want to convince myself when mary said how shall these things be gabriel owed her an explanation and it took time to explain and she said i believe 
although I've never seen how a woman gives birth without a man, but I believe. And he said, be it unto me according to your word. Instantly she got pregnant. Zechariah had seen a lot of spiritual laws. That's why when he doubted Gabriel, he said, let's shut the mouth of this man. He's going to use the next spiritual law I'm about to teach you to change what we want to do. Is somebody learning something? Hear me. This is what makes ministry easy. I never spend time just wondering how do we publicize to get crowd. Koinonia will be a reflection of the quality of both the spiritual, the intellectual, and the physical ideologies of the leaders. You change a system by changing the leaders. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of our fathers did not change themselves. They took one bottle of Gouda and slapped you when you took one cup. Did you change? You see that? Because they have become a reality for you and they are saying, if I catch you drinking, that's the day I will kill you. Go and buy me Gouda, Joe. They just finished talking to you and they said, go and buy it. Please hear me. If you want to see changes in your life, you are going to have to find out what ideologies have kept me where I am. There are some of you who never believe God can bless you. Right? As you are looking at me right now, if God even says he will give you 100,000, you say, Amen. You know that kind of unbelieving Amen. Listen, let's not make God look like a liar. This is the year of the rain. There are some of you who God wants you to walk in levels of anointing you have never seen. There are some of you who want to, God wants you to walk in certain depths. But do you believe him? There is nothing God has told me that I've not believed. I don't announce things till I'm sure I've believed it. When I believe it, I don't care who believes it again. So be it. The word of the Lord will come to pass. When God told Noah, he said, rain is coming. Build an ark. Do you think Noah just said, yes, sir? No. Noah would have said, God, my name is Noah. Your name is Yahweh. You're, you are almighty. We are not the same. Convince me. Convince me. When Noah was convinced, after 120 years, based on X timing, he still didn't give up. We talk about Abraham who waited 25 years. What of Noah? Noah waited 120 years. I'm sure people will say, look, when we were 50 years, when I gave birth to three children, this stupid man was busy building this ark. He has been searching for gopher wood around the whole world to build, searching for gum, searching for a lot of things. And then when he finished, we now saw him going to the jungle, looking for every kind of bed. Imagine what they would have told his wife. Say, madam, did you have to marry this man? But listen, one day, one day, his confidence in God showed him. Listen, you may be tight in now. You are seeing what God is doing in your life. You are seeing the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. It may not show. The Bible says, Why we look not at the things that are what? Seen. But the things that are unseen. I'm giving you a scriptural proof. It said, For the things that are seen are what? Temporal. That means there is a level of confidence and renewal that can change anything you see before you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe this? Pastor Jakes is here. He will testify. Right from when the ministry, this used to be all of us. We form a, Aaron is here. We form a circle. And all just sit down on the floor. I made certain statements like a fool. Right? But today and listen this is not even it yet you wait and see what god will do with us oh i believe him i believe him absolutely carve upon my heart this truth that sets me free according to your do you know your academic situation can change please i'm speaking to somebody do you know your destiny can change if you keep thinking we are the helpless nigerians i guarantee you after 50 years you will celebrate golden jubilee suffering but i will feed nations huh 
I may be rubbing granite oil as, as, as Vaseline, but a day will come. Why we look not, brothers and sisters, as I look at you, I don't see the weak you. That's why I say, as I look at you, I see nations. Nations. Who told you you will not be the mother of nations? I'm 30 years. So what? So what about 30 years? Would you stand and say, I saw when I was 23, I know that the Lord told me I'm giving birth to a prophet and it's going to arise. That vision is still there. I am convinced. Yeah. The things that we see are subject to change. One day you are taking your bath and you see growths and tumors all around your body. You just say, hey, this is how I'm going to die. Cancer. And the devil said, not just cancer, fibroid, fibroid. Notice, do you know that many sick people may carry certain sicknesses for years and never fall sick because doctor has not told them. Now doctors, don't be, don't be sad. I'm just saying, because you did, you did not know it was not your reality. Many men were carrying prostate cancer carrying all kinds of things many ladies carrying fibroids carrying a lot of things and nothing happened to them but the day they looked and said do you know do you really know the implication of ss are you aware that the way that this has been happening you won't get a child in fact the way we are looking cat is your womb self it's not looking like the womb of a human being you just say ah and you now start saying that means no marriage a godly brother comes and you say my brother i'm pitying you you i don't want you to suffer in this life reality i hope you are laughing and you are see i'm telling you the secret to some of these results that you see these are my contemplations those who know me know that my reality is defined i never surround myself with nonsense you don't come around me gossiping and, and gossiping and speaking because I know that I am absolutely in control. This has become the mirror to my world. This is how I see things. I only see things consistent. When I'm going for a meeting, I know there will be an outpouring of the spirit. I don't care whether they have faith or not. I don't care whether they can believe or not. Whether they are instrumentalists to charge the atmosphere or not is irrelevant. When I step there, I know that I bring an atmosphere. I carry my own spiritual climate. Me and the Holy Spirit, a team. The workers in this ministry have received of this spirit. That's why in the afternoon they arrange chairs and they dress. Who guaranteed them that you were coming? Did you sign a form? We having the same spirit of faith as it is written. Koinonia, hear me tonight. We are only 23 or 24 days into January. You can sit down with this, your belief system, and you will celebrate Christmas in this condition. Or you can rise up. Ah, but I know people who love God, they have died. I know people who love God, things have happened. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about you here, not your neighbor. The just shall live by his faith. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? I read a story of somebody 109 years, still alive. In fact, three women. They were even putting makeup. 109 years. Life and strong in the midst of this wicked world. They don't expect. What do you expect in your life? See, these are powerful spiritual laws. The second law. Give me five minutes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Quickly please. The creative power of words. I know that we have been taught that words are powerful. But I want to show you the spiritual dimension of words. There is a reason why God called himself the word. You know why God named himself the word. It says, and God did what? And God, not and God wished. Not and God expected. Not and God complained. He said the earth was dark and void and formless. And God, the talking spirit, said. 
the word said there doesn't mean and God declared what it meant was God commanded it to be so the word said there does not just mean and God recited no God didn't recite anything say I'm healed I'm healed that's recitation you are not talking what many people have been talking in the body of Christ that they are calling confession is recitation I'm telling you this Con the word confess comes from the Greek word homologio it's not just repeat what you say is you are given an empowerment to say it. I prophesied as I was commanded. He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you read the verses down the line. It says, and God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. Listen to me. Words are powerful because when you speak a word, it activates spiritual laws and deactivates other laws. Listen to me. There are many laws that make realities to work. The key to activating their operation is in words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you speak, whether you realize it or not, something is loosed and something is tied. It depends on what is loosed and what is tied. Please follow me. The Bible says... How did he put it now? Whatsoever you bind, right? Do you bind just by tying a rope? Jesus looked at a fig tree and he didn't need to say the law of fruitfulness cease operation from this tree. The law of regeneration stop. I command the fertilizer don't enter the root again. He just used words and activate all the laws that needed to be activated for that tree to shrink. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of learning all the laws, God gives you the keys that activates them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when I declare and I say, I am healed, I release a lot of spiritual laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we stand now and I declare, I say in the name of Jesus, the power of God will start moving in this place. Suddenly you hear people falling and shouting. Why didn't it happen now? Listen. The words that I'm speaking are activating both the operation of angels, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Our words activate the dimension of God that is revealed in a meeting. That's why when during miracle service, the worship people sing songs that invoke that dimension. Are you getting what we're saying? If you know this, you will know that from morning till night, some of you have activated woes and tragedies in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, let's, let me show you a few scriptures. Our time, uh, I've been fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we've been closing so late. We'll see what we can do about it. It's just the passion in my heart. Psalm 141 verse 3. Media, please help us. Let's rush. So that we get up and round up. <sighs> Psalms 141 verse 3. It says, set a watch, O Lord, before where? And do what? Keep a door. Knowing that every time I speak, my mouth didn't just open. A door open in the spirit. The opening of my mouth is the opening of a door in the spirit. It says, set a watch. Oh God, this my mouth can lead me in trouble. So set a watch. Set a watch over my mouth. Numbers chapter 14 verse 28. Zipra toka shila kariyata ko sopra nikata yaraba. Vindike sila kariyaba. Numbers 14 verse 28. Very quickly. Everyone read. Want to read. 28 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in my ears so i will do what as i hear you say not wish he said let the redeemed of the lord he already called you redeemed but he says say it let the shield of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so 
Let the anointing of the, the anointed of the Lord say so. They are not reminding themselves. They are activating that reality. Everybody say, when I speak, I activate realities. Say it again. When I speak, I activate spiritual laws. That's right. It depends on what law you activate. But something must be activated. When you understand this, you will know that words are expensive. Let's look at just two more verses. Proverbs 18, verse 21. If you can look at that. Proverbs 18. You can write it down. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Listen. Death and life are where? Did he say death and life are on top of your head? Did he say death and life are... It says death and life are in the power, the proceeds of the tongue, and like a seed, they that love it shall eat the fruit that grows from that seed. The Bible says the seed is the word in the parable of the sower. What is the seed? Meaning, every time you speak, you sow the seed. Is that true? It said the seed is the word so when i begin to speak even in tongues i'm sowing i'm activating laws in the spirit when i begin to pray my day is blessed in the name of the lord jesus i am lifted i'm activating spiritual laws and i authorize the spirit of god to begin to schedule opportunities to schedule certain things and you find out that after prayer you activate laws of favor as you are stepping out you bump into your destiny helper you call it coincidence the bible calls it life that your tongue released that's why job said what i have feared most has come upon me Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Please let's read it together. He that keepeth his mouth. Stop. How do you keep your life? Insurance. Answer me. I'm not against insurance. Do life assurance, life insurance. But the Bible, the written word of God, the living logos. He that keep, how do you keep your life in the spirit? By keeping your mouth. Ah. Papa Hagin said this. Kenneth Copeland said this. Those guys said these things. So many people. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. He said I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. But I can only advise you. Choose. He said he that keepeth his mouth. Keepeth what? He said, but he that openeth wide his lips, speaking nonsense any day, any time, and saying it does not matter, he says that he shall have what? As a fruit. Brothers and sisters, listen. Ladies, when we are, when we are about to pray, in the midst of your prayer, you will lay your hands on your womb and pray and say, no devil. No devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are afraid right now. The rate at which ladies are scared of fibroid is alarming. You are just eating too much. You look at your stomach and say, this, this, thing, this is how it starts. I have the power to create. And I have the power to destroy. The power of words is in its ability to activate spiritual laws. That's what I want you to know. Many of us have been taught that words are powerful, but what makes it powerful? Words are keys in the spirit. They activate laws. So now, it's not just blind confession. Oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. As if you are reciting a magic formula. No, that's madness. You speak out of the abundance of knowledge that when I declare that I am blessed, I am activating something. You wait until we have the other series that we have. There are so many things that you will learn this year. Two laws you have learned tonight. The first one is that there are spiritual laws. And that one of the laws, listen, is that to change your outside, 
you change what is inside stop wasting your time whatever you don't like outside get the renewal the mind component of what you want outside bill johnson got it right when he wrote the book the supernatural power of a transformed mind i don't expect this ministry to ever go down we will keep speaking it we will keep rising i expect every one of you in this year to break on every side and whenever i pray for you that's what i pray i don't pray blindly and say lord eh, your will be done i know what his will is his will is not fake his spirit has revealed his will in his word i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper for i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah rise up on your feet we are going to pray we'll pray for just five minutes but i want us to take this serious because as we are praying something will be happening to you lift your voice and thank him for the word the reality of spiritual laws bless him bless him for the word don't trivialize what you have received it has changed kings it has made champions you only arise and shine when your light comes and then the glory of the lord rises upon you hallelujah three quick prayer points prayer point number one you are going to say lord let the ministry of the holy ghost be strong in my life so that you will open me up to these deep mysteries lift your voice and pray pray no matter your spiritual level even if you're just visiting for the first time pray from the depths of your heart please pray inside and in the overflow lift your voice and pray it's the year of the rain. Holy Spirit, overshadow me in a new dimension. Open me up to the mysteries and the depths and the dimensions. hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to pray and say lord whatever needs to change in my life for my the quality of my life to change let the word of god change it change my inner reality change my mindset lift your voice and cry passionately your life is at the mercy of this prayer. Lord, I desire a new level of excellence. A new level of grace. A new level of possibility in my life. Go ahead and pray. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you as the healer. Help me to believe you are able. Help me to believe you are mighty. Change my mindset. Change my perception. Change my perception about prosperity. Change my perception about protection. Change my perception about spiritual power change my perception about my academics change my perception about my marriage change my perception about my ministry about my business about my job about my husband about my wife about my organization 
lift your voice and pray. Your life is a reflection, an eventual reflection of your convictions, of your perceptions. Oh, it's a powerful spiritual law. I pray you believe it. I pray you believe it. Last prayer point. Father, imprint in my spirit the revelation that my words are powerful. Go ahead and pray. Imprint in me. Lord, I cancel every negative word that I've spoken in my life. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Confessions I made when I was angry. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Dangerous laws I activated that killed favor in my life. Confessions that killed my prayer life. Confessions that killed my my integrity. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. Outside, make sure you are praying. No matter how far you are. No matter how far you are. Connect with us in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, find a neighbor and for the next one minute, I'd like you to activate laws over that person's life. Activate favor. Activate grace. Activate hunger for spiritual things. Close every door of witchcraft. Close every door of failure. Find a serious neighbor that came to Koinonia to pray. Lift your voice and pray. I bless this house in the name of Jesus. I command favor upon your people. I command favor. I command long life. I saw seeds of greatness. I saw seeds of power. I release the operation of the Holy Ghost upon lives, upon families. I command supernatural dreams. I command visions. I release encounters with the Holy Ghost. Encounters with the spirit of might, encounters of favor, encounters of power. I command no death, no accident, no terrorism, no bomb blast, no witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command every law that has been activated. That is being manipulated by darkness over your life to bring failure, to bring woes. I cancel it by the blood of the eternal covenant. Bless your neighbor. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Let the fountain of the heavens be open for you. Let men look for you. May they bless you. May you become the subject of discussion. I bless your academics. I change your result. I change your genotype. I command promotion to your job. Increase in your ministry. Increase in your business. Increase in your anointing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Listen. What I'm teaching you now is the true spirit of prophecy. Many people speak, but the problem is we don't, we have not been taught what happens in the spirit when you speak. In one minute I want to release words in your life. Listen. 
now you know what happens listen demonic spirits enchantments and spells all they do is to activate laws against you that's all that happens when they enchant things the bible says in job chapter 5 that you will be delivered from the scourging tongues of men men use their tongues to tie your destiny men use their tongues to tie your womb but i come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood lift your hands and receive this prophecy in the name that is above all names i command opportunities i command opportunities i command favor in the name of the son of the living god i command favor i activate favor from the realm of the spirit the reign of favor the reign of goodness the reign of favor the reign of goodness in the name of jesus christ i speak against every infirmity that has challenged your body the power that spoke it into being i cast that power and i command that that infirmity leaves your body now these hands that are lifted may men bring finances to that hand i prophesy it in the name of the lord jesus that this week that is coming these hands that are lifted i tell you many of you will return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ whatever manipulates your intelligence so that you don't understand what is taught whatever tears the devil sowed among the wheat in the name that is above all names i release you from that power now hear me anyone here who has been caused by your parents they did not know they were angry but they didn't know they activated a law that has made things to work against you i stand under this apostolic office tonight i reverse that law in the name of jesus i reverse that law in the name of jesus for everyone that calls you i bless you i bless you some of us everything works for everybody until it gets to your turn things are so hard a little thing you have to suffer in the name of jesus in this year of the rain i prophesy upon your life let supernatural ease come to your life whoever must call you and help you and open the door for your next level wherever they are in the name of jesus the same way wise men saw the star and they went to jesus with gifts i call them wherever they are may they come to you in the name of jesus i release upon you grace beginning from today whatever you do will prosper every enchantment that killed your prayer life so you stop speaking you stop waking up in the night to pray and orchestrate things powers were invoked to make you sleep and not wake up and pray right now i stretch my hands to the heavens and in the name of the god of heaven i command those spells broken may your prayer life resurrect in the name of jesus hear me the grace to wake up in the night and speak into the womb of the morning i release that grace upon you ladies whoever has called you weak and whoever has said you will not amount to anything in the name of the lord jesus i cancel that statement now in the name of jesus hear me whatever your life has been associated with before now sickness failure lack of spiritual fire 
Makata likete redo sutu balata. Embre kete leketa tabarata tabarata. In the name of Jesus, I change that situation now. I change that situation now. I change that situation now. Hear me. Any human agent responsible for where you are, except I am not called of God, in the name of Jesus, we release a sword of judgment. We release a sword of judgment. Hear me. I say it again that if there is any human agent that has participated in the downfall of your life, your finances, and your family, I command judgment now. I command judgment now. Look at the brother that shared the testimony 2005 to 2015. Whatever wants to tie you, that when others are moving, you will not move forward. In the name of Jesus, I release you today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your assignment for this week, as we prepare for the miracle service, next week, Friday, will be fire in this place. We will engulf this place with fire. Hallelujah. Please make sure you invite everyone you truly love. God is good. This is the year of the rain. There is no distance that is too far for anybody who truly wants solution in their lives. Are you hearing me? There are people that have been needlessly barren for decades. What for? What for? Is there no barren in Gilead? The problem is we are talkers. We speak a lot of rubbish without revelation. But let me tell you, not everyone is fake. There are men that have taught something truly in the spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him thanks. We're out of time. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Our time is up, but I just want you to be patient for a few minutes. Those who have never given their lives to Christ, now listen. This is very serious. This is one of the reasons why we stand. In the realm of the spirit, your connection matters. If you are not in Christ, inside and outside, or at one time you have committed your ways to God, but for some reason you found yourself, your life just went haywire, and you're saying, Lord, I want to start 2015 on a very good note. Wherever you are, inside and outside, I'm giving you an opportunity to come out here right now quickly to give your life to Jesus and to rededicate your life. Don't wait for anybody. You know yourself. The Lord is speaking to you. Encourage them. Encourage them if there are any people. Inside and outside, no matter how far. This is very important. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming. Appreciate them. Don't be afraid. The devil is a liar. Koinonia, clap for them. Encourage them. We call the devil a liar tonight. Sister, don't sit back there. It's a new season. It's time to get serious with Jesus. It's time to say, Lord, I give up everything. I mean business with you. I mean business with you. They are coming from outside. Celebrate them. They are coming to Jesus. They are coming to Jesus. They are coming to Jesus. Keep coming. We are out of time, but keep coming. They are coming to Jesus. As you come here, begin to talk to Jesus Christ. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Talk to the Lord passionately from your heart. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's over. I mean business with you tonight. I mean business with you tonight. I mean it from your heart. Hallelujah. Now, thank you for coming out. Place your hand on your chest as I lead you to make this prayer. You're not reciting a poem. Remember, we said words activate certain things. The Bible ties your salvation even to your words and your confessions. Say after me, dear Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I ask you to forgive me my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. I receive remission of sin and the gift of righteousness. 
I receive eternal life. Say it. Into my spirit. And I declare that from today, the power of sin is broken over my life. I am alive to righteousness. In the name of Jesus. My name is in the book of life. And I am a child of God. In Jesus name. Father, thank you for these ones. They have spoken words. They have authorized the Holy Spirit to come upon them and bring eternal life and change their lives. May it be so in the name of Jesus. I break every addiction and anything that is not of God in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. I want you to follow the brother waving his hands. There's someone waving his hands, a gentleman. I'd like you to follow them. They'll have your information and they'll give you a few information. Celebrate. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.